Christmas, Merry Christmas. Is it, has it been a wonderful day for you? I'll tell you, this time of the year, it's a wonderful time. Celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ is something to celebrate and be happy about. And we're here cooking up a Christmas dinner par excellence, I hope. We're having a good time doing it. And this time of the year particularly, friends and family mean so much to us. And um, I feel very blessed because I have wonderful family and wonderful friends. And how do you like this beautiful pinafore apron that I'm wearing? Isn't this beautiful? This has truly been a labor of love. And God has added to my life so richly in the last year for a very good friend of mine who stitched this apron together for me. And I would like to introduce her to you. Come on, Rose. <laughs> Every stitch was a joy, Arlen. This is Rose Devnikar who works with us on At Home. And you see her not very often because she doesn't like to be on this side of the camera. But she made this beautiful apron for me. And I just want to thank you. You're welcome. It was a joy. Bless you. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me. Come over here. We're going to invite the folks to come right back after this message because we're going to start our Christmas dinner and you're not going to want to miss one minute of it. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and let me tell you what our menu for today is. This is a beautiful baked ham, and I'm not going to give you step-by-step -step instructions, but I'm going to tell you because this ham is so easy to do. I learned a long time ago from a good friend that if you bake a ham, start it very slow in about a 300 degree oven, and just pour plain old apple cider vinegar. That's what we want all over the ham and let it go for about four hours. Just keep basting it with plain old vinegar. You say, why vinegar? Vinegar, that acid in the vinegar tends to make the wildness sometime or the, the strong flavor of a ham, it just neutralizes it. Then about the last hour and a half, I, I have scored the ham at first. Let me go back and say, score the ham, pour the vinegar on it. Let it go for four hours or so. Then come back and put your brown sugar, pack your brown sugar in the scores because they have opened up and then put your pineapple and cherries on and take your pineapple juice and three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar and cook it together till it melts and then baste the whole top of it and you will have, look how juicy that ham is. Can you see that? That is a ham that we're going to be serving to some of our family and friends in just a few moments. To go with this, uh, we're going to make a few things and first of all, let me tell you about our beets that we have cooking here. I want to let you know that these little tiny beets, we're gonna make pickled beets and, and eggs is what this is called. A lot of people think that that's, oh, that's best to have that in the summertime, but beets are very good for you and they're always tasty, no matter when you serve them. So we've just warmed them up a little bit in this, um, in our pan, and we're gonna add some vinegar to it because that's what's gonna pickle them is the vinegar. And I would add about a fourth of a cup. This is three cans, by the way. You would do it by tablespoon. And again, you always test according to your taste. If you like it tartar, then you put more vinegar. If you like it sweeter, you put more sugar. After you have done that, then you add some sugar. You can use sweet and low. I've done it with sweet and low lots of times. Just add some sugar to it. And again, once the sugar has totally dissolved, the best way to figure out if you like the taste of the pickling is just to taste it. And if you like it a little bit sweeter, I think for this many cans, I would just add just a, a nip more of sugar. Then you're gonna put just some good old black pepper, fresh ground black pepper all over the top because that's what makes them good. Okay, now I would take them off at this particular point. Okay, cut the fire out. You don't even have to let them boil. It just really is taking the chill off the, the beet juice that's in there. And um, next you have hard boiled eggs. Now a lot of people wait till these cool down. 
I don't. I put them in then because the, lo the longer that the eggs are in there, the darker they're going to get to the pickle, to be pickled. If you find out you have more beets than juice, just add a little bit of water to it. That will be fine because it will just um, water down the beet juice, but it will still be fine. No problem with that. And what you would do, you would take them and you would put them, when this cools down to room temperature, then you put them in a crock and you want to put them in the, in the refrigerator because they're good cold or they're good hot, but mostly they're good cold. And you mix them up and while they're in the refrigerator, you keep turning them because if you have an egg that's not totally submerged in the beet juice, what happens is it'll have a ring around it like a, an Easter egg and we don't want that. So these, we'll let them sit until they get to room temperature and then we'll chill them down in the refrigerator and that's as easy a pickled beets and eggs recipe as you're gonna find. Okay, one of the other vegetables that we're working on is steamed broccoli. We're just gonna put a, a, a simple little garlic and oil sauce on that. Working on that, we've got our ham, we've got pickled beets and eggs, and we're gonna keep the steamer going. Remember to keep the little vent holes closed when you're steaming vegetables. All right, to add to this, we want to make the linguine salad or a pasta salad. And this salad is so easy, um, it's, it's no chore when it comes to thinking, you know, usually you go with, oh, we should have scalloped potatoes, or we, we should have this, or we should have that. Now, I don't know what Christmas day is like at your house, but at our house, I like to prepare the meal and then relax. I don't like to be tied up in the kitchen all day because I think we do that every day, preparing meals. So it's nice to plan a menu that you can do most of the work ahead. It can be left on the table for not a real, real long time, but you don't have to jump up and hurry up and refrigerate it. Plan a meal like that and make it easier on yourself. Um, do portions. If you're planning on people stopping in through the day and then again in the evening, you might want to make two portions. Just put out half of your portion of a linguine salad or the pickled beets and eggs or your broccoli. Steam some fresh broccoli at night because then you always have a fresh look to your table instead of putting everything out and then at two o'clock and then at eight or nine o'clock at night you're saying, oh my goodness, this table looks horrible. So just be thoughtful in that area when you're planning your table for the holidays. Well, let's get on with our pasta salad. I have one pound package. Now these are the rotinis. These are the little, we used to call them springs when I was a kid because uh, that's what they look like to us, the little springs. And uh, we have cooked them and they're cold. And um, you wanna cook them, make sure you rinse them well because they will become mushy and don't cook them too long. All right, to that, we're gonna add our green peppers. Now, with a salad like this, you can add anything you want. My sister-in-law says she puts pepperoni in hers sometimes, she puts sliced mushrooms. Just whatever you want to put in will be fine. Anything and everything. Good time to, to uh, maybe take some of the vegetables left over from a party that you'd had a night or two before. Get them out, chop them up, and put them in the salad. You can put little chunks of salami. I'm adding, this is one cucumber and a green pepper. This is diced red tomatoes. Okay, of course, what other color tomatoes are there? Okay, there's only red tomatoes. <laughs> oh, that's right, there are green tomatoes. That's right, we made them not too long ago. And then a few olives, just add those two. You know, the floor director over here, you know, it's Christmas time. Let's see what's in your stocking, Dale. <laughs> or what isn't in your stocking, maybe is a better thing. Okay, let's mix this up. And what you're going to flavor this with is, um, in, in like I said, there are no limitations to what you can put. If you like uh, some green onion, put green onion. You can add any of the things. Let's see, I have a whole list of options. Mushrooms, pepperoni, cauliflower, broccoli, onion, anything you want. Cheese, little chunks of cheese, you can use any of those things. But the key and the secret is, that, of course this is from the, the company that makes um, this particular kind of spice, and it's called Salad Supreme. And Salad Supreme, Dale, would you open that for me while I'm doing my other? Salad Supreme is a spice that really is, perks up this whole salad. It's a salad that, um, like I said, it will keep for a while, it'll keep till the next day, it'll keep, you know, until they eat it all up. Thanks, Dale. Okay, now some people say to use a whole bottle. I think that's too much. So I usually do about half a bottle. I'll put some in and then I'll wait, mix it up, okay? 
and just to wait and see, because you, if it gets too much, it's overpowering, really overpowering. All right, so I think we'll add a little bit more, okay? And there's, this is a, a real conglomeration of all different kinds of seasonings and herbs in there. It smells good. I think there's a lot of paprika from the way it smells. It's, it's a little expensive, but it does taste good, and you can't duplicate it because there's such a variety. Then after you get to that point, you take, now this is a really large one. You only need a 12 ounce, so we're just gonna use half of this particular dressing. And uh, we're gonna pour that all over, okay? Now remember I told you that we needed something that we could do ahead? This can be made the day before and refrigerated overnight to make it really blend the flavors. They're delicious when you do that. You see how, what a wonderful, really a pretty salad that is? I think it's just gorgeous. With the black olives, maybe put some more black olives in there. You want to put some more green olives in there, pepperoncinis. You can put anything you want in it because there are no limitations to this salad. And this salad will hold up under um, a day of activity, believe me. And it seems like, to people I've talked to when I've made it, the longer you, you, you uh, let it get cold and like the day after Christmas, it would probably really be good. You'd probably really enjoy it that day. But that is our pasta salad. We're gonna put that in a big, beautiful serving bowl and show you that at the end of the program along with all the other things that we have been preparing. Do you love watching At Home with Arlene Williams? Then be sure to check out our new YouTube channel. It's filled with classic episodes from over 20 years of At Home and more videos are added each day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. So we have our pasta salad. We have our pickled beets and eggs. Okay. And we're gonna just set that out there. We have to have a dessert. And I know that you've been doing those cookies like we showed you, we showed you all the different kinds of cookies to make. I know that you've been working on that. And uh, I just thought, I never realized that um, pies were a big part of Christmas desserts. Uh, particularly not here in the Pittsburgh area. Now you folks there in Chicago and in the Kansas City area, maybe it is with you, but we never realized that pies were so uh, important at Christmas time until I was talking to some friends and they said, oh, my mother always made cherry pies. She would make uh, pumpkin pies. I said, for Christmas? Yeah. So that sounds like Thanksgiving to me. She said, no, we made all a whole variety. Let me check my bake my broccoli over here. Yeah, I think that's about done. Let's turn that off. Anyway, uh, she, she said, no, we make pies because it's always talk about a Christmas pie. And I thought, well, you know, there's songs even written about a Christmas pie, so why not? Well, we thought we'd make you the wonderful pecan pie, which is deadly on the diet, but oh, it tastes so good. It's so good. So we're gonna start, this is a very simple, easy, very easy pie recipe for pecan pie. First of all, you have to have a nine inch baked, I'm sorry, unbaked pie crust, okay? And you have to be sure that you bring your edges up very high on your pie crust because if you don't, when you put the filling in and it begins to bake, it will bake all over your oven and it will be horrible. So be sure to, to put a high flute on the edge of your pie crust, okay? Well, we start now with three eggs. Okay, let's take a look, whoops, this one. Look at the difference in the size of eggs. This is a medium and this is an extra large. Doesn't seem like there's that much, does it? The price is a big difference, let me tell you. <laughs> That's where you'll see the difference, is in the price. But it's Christmas and everybody spends a little extra at Christmas and some even spend a lot extra, which they live all year to regret. And I hope that you haven't done that this year. I hope you've made gifts from the heart. Okay, so we're gonna take our three eggs. Let's beat them up a little bit. Okay. Usually in recipes when it calls for eggs, they're, they're referring to large eggs, the large size eggs. Okay, to that we're going to add two thirds cup sugar. Okay, and I'm gonna beat after each one because I think it makes it better. Sometimes you get a, if you get a bite of a pie and you find a big lump of sugar, you know that somebody didn't blend it real well. 
because that should be blended totally together. All right, now here's the stuff that the, <clears throat> it'll stick to you if, it, if you don't stick to it. Boy, this stuff is thick. This is one cup of Cairo dark corn syrup. And the floor director told me he was raised on Cairo. I said, my. He used to eat on pancakes. I never realized that. He used to eat on pancakes. Hmm. Well, that's one cup of dark Cairo syrup. We're going to blend that. Boy, it gets thick instantly when you add that Cairo. You almost can't move the whip around here. But isn't it a wonderful time of the year? I mean, this just Christmas. It's upon us and just being with friends and family in the kitchen and talking the hustle and the bustle has finally coming to a close and winding down. And aren't you thankful it is? I mean, by now you've, you have bought your last present, you've shopped your last gift. This is it. What is done is done and what isn't, it's not going to get done until next year. That's the way I feel. It feels good when you get to that point. All right, now we're going to add s some melted margarine. Okay. We have some melted margarine. Mix that up well. Okay. Great. See how nice and fluffy that is? That's the way it should be. And then, of course, our cup of walnuts. And I cannot stress to you how important it is that when you buy walnuts, you get fresh ones and not rancid ones. Trust me when, I'm sorry, pecans. Slip of it there. When you buy pecans, make sure that they are fresh because if they taste strong, they will ruin and flavor whatever you're baking or making. My friend Rose, who made me this apron, we were, she was telling me that she makes these wonderful like little meringues and she uses pecans in them and she had some rancid pecans and it totally changes the flavor and it's a horrible flavor. And a lot of times where you buy them, they've been packaged for so long sitting on the shelves that the the grocer doesn't even realize that they're that old. But if you take them back, I'm sure that they will uh, be very happy to refund your money. So what you would do is you put, pour your filling into your pie shell. Now remember, that's pecans, not walnuts. It's pecans. How oh, did I slip up on that? I, I imagine you could make this pie, though, and use walnuts if you want, if you didn't like pecans. Some people don't like pecans as well as they do walnuts. Personally, I like the variety, I think is nice. Like I said, scrape all that out because that's a bite somebody won't have if we leave it in the pan, okay? All right, we're gonna take our pie and we're gonna put it in the oven. This is going to bake at, 300, at 350 degrees for 50 minutes, okay? 350 degrees for 50 minutes. Okay, well, let's see, what do we have done here now? We've got the salad made, our broccoli's going to town. Dale, how much time do we have here? Okay, you know, holiday time, a lot of people are drinking, um, doing, celebrating, and not using common sense to know that, number one, you shouldn't be drinking because uh, when you're driving, it's just not right. So. People say, yeah, but you know, we have to have a little something to drink because it's the holidays. Well, I don't necessarily concur with that, but I wanted to give you an option of something you could make that is real different and so tasty. This is what I call a cranberry spritzer. Now, cranberry juice is very good for you. You can buy the low calorie or you can buy um, just the regular, you can buy generic. Generic doesn't have as much juice in it as the, the label brand does, but cranberry juice is very good for you. All you do is you take your pitcher and you put a few ice cubes in there and you pour it up, pour it into about a third, okay? It's nice because it looks nice on, for the holiday table because it's red. Then you add any kind of a lemon-lime drink. It doesn't have to be a name brand, but any kind of a lemon-lime soda. Just add that to the cranberry. And did you know that if you pour it down the side, it's, it's supposed to keep some of the fizz better than if you pour it straight into a cup or a glass or a pitcher? So you just pour it up 
to almost the very top of the pitcher. This is lemon lime. It's easy to make. Have you ever thought, oh, I wish I could make a fruit punch of some kind? You could, you could put this in a fruit bowl. And what you do after that is you add some slices of lemon and some slices of lime to it. This is absolutely one of the most refreshing drinks because the cranberry is tart and usually a lot of the things that you're going to be having will have a sweetness to them and I like a lot of this so I put a lot in it like when it goes down the side of the pitcher basically that's your cranberry spritzer it's good in the summertime it's good in the winter time it's really festive for a holiday table I hope that we have given you some ideas I hope that you haven't uh, spent a lot of time just trying to think, what in the world can I make? The ham seems to be the traditional thing. It seems to be something that people uh, associate that with Christmas, like they associate the turkey with Thanksgiving. And uh, I thought this first Christmas that we would spend together, I would make the traditional ham for you. This is just some ideas. What I would put with that ham besides my uh, pasta salad is I would bake some sweet potatoes and don't put any candy on them or don't just have a plain baked sweet potato in case somebody is limited and cannot eat what you have prepared. A baked sweet potato is good and healthy. I would uh, bake, uh, bake some warm rolls or toast some rolls of some kind. I would also add um, maybe a salad tray like some radishes and some celery and some carrot sticks. Try to keep in mind that you may have friends in or maybe somebody in your family likes just plain foods and doesn't like the fancy things or the things with a big dressing or, or cream or whatever on them. And the mark of a good hostess and a good cook is that you always consider the guest, not what you necessarily want to make, but what your guests will be able to eat because there's nothing so satisfying as at the end of a party for someone to say, boy, you know, I really enjoyed that. I've never tasted that before. It was on, I'm on a diet or a special food diet and I could have some of that and that was really good. You know what else I do? I keep a little kind of a log that when we have a party and I keep all the guests, the name of their, the guests that were there, then if someone said I really enjoyed that, I mark that on there so the next time they come to my house maybe I'll prepare that same dish for them again. You will not believe how many times they'll say, oh, you remembered, you remembered that I really liked that broccoli or I really liked the, the pasta. And those are things that are marks of a good hostess. And I would ask you just to try to get a little organized before your meal this time. Get your linens out, get the table all set, and don't get so worried about making this perfect meal that when the kids come in with the new toys that maybe they want you to share or look at, don't push them away, but just take the time to spend it with them. Remember, Christmas is a wonderful family day. And with your family around you, what more could you want? Well, we're going to be back with the entire spread in just a minute. So don't go away. We'll be back with some final thoughts in just a minute. Just go to ctvn.org slash at home to get all the recipes from today's show for free. That's right. No subscriptions, they're available online at no cost, and more are being added each day. So join us at ctvn.org slash at home to get today's recipes now. Well, I'm with my family, and it's such a wonderful time to be with them. Merry Christmas, Dad. Okay. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Paul. Merry. And a Merry Christmas to you, and we've prepared a whole bevy of wonderful things for our friends and family. Well, here's our friends coming in now. Come on in. Help yourself. Hi. Good to see you. Look at this. How are you? Good to see you. Merry Christmas. Bless you. This is great. How are you doing? Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you, Oline. Hi, guys. Come on in. Merry Christmas. So glad you could come. Please help yourself. Make yourself right at home. Merry Christmas, Dee. Please, and I wish that you could be here with us today because it's a wonderful time. Come on, get a plate, grab something to eat. There's plenty here. You've been watching while we've been putting it together. Now we're going to share a little time where we want to sing something specially for you, okay? Silent night, holy night.
singing. That's great. That's great. I trust that you will have the most wonderful Christmas that you've ever experienced. May admonish you just to stop and think about what Christmas is really all about. In the festivities of the day, think about the real greatest gift that you could ever receive, the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust that today is a very special day in your home. And let this spirit of joy that we're experiencing today, I trust that it will just keep going on throughout the new year. I want to say that you, you should look forward to a very blessed new year because good things come from those who know the Lord Jesus as their Savior. If you haven't had that opportunity, I pray that you would invite him to come into your heart today, the greatest gift of all. Well, Merry Christmas, folks. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year to you. And Merry Christmas to you, too. And God bless you great. Oh, come, let us Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, PA. Cookware provided by Woolies. Your favorite gourmet deserves the best for less at Woolly Balcony Cookware. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.